Let's take a look at proportional quantities. So here we know that Raphael is making biscuits and here is the recipe. So 200 flour, 350 sugar, four eggs and a teaspoon of baking powder. So here we've been told she's using 600 grams of flour. So we know that 600 is three times greater than the 200 in the recipe. So basically she's tripling the recipe. So therefore she will need to triple every other ingredient if she wants to make biscuits that taste nice. So therefore she's gonna need three teaspoons of baking powder. She's gonna need 12 eggs and the trickiest calculation, three lots of 350 of sugar and 350 multiplied by three is 1050 grams of sugar. And we're done. So we're just scaling the recipe up three times. In this question, we know that Reese uses 2.4 kilos for four loaves of bread. So four loaves equals 2.4 kilos. Now, if we were told that he wants to make eight loaves, well, that'd be easy. It would just be double the amount of flour because he's making double the quantity of bread. But we need to work out seven loaves, which is a bit tricky. So what we're going to do is work out what, how much does he use for one loaf? So one loaf is going to be 2.4 divided by four because we're making four times less bread. So we'll need four times less flour. 2.4 divided by four is 0 0.6. So we need 0 0.6 kilos per loaf. So for seven loaves, it's just simply going to be seven multiplied by 0 0.6. And that comes to a total of 4.2 kilos. If you wanted to, you could have converted them into grams, but if we're using a calculator, we can just leave it as kilos and work around the decimals. It's not really a problem. So if 13 books cost £97.50, how many books can you buy for £202.50? So we know that 13 equals 97.50. So how much does one cost? So if 13 is 97.50, then one is going to be 19.750 divided by 13. So therefore, one book is going to cost, let's quickly type that into the calculator, £7.50. So how many can you buy for £202.50? So what we want to know is how many 750s are there in £202.50? So therefore, that calculation is 2250 divided by 750. And 2250 divided by 750 is 27. So we can buy 27 books. So this direct proportion is quite easy to follow. If a t-shirt costs 7.99, then 12 t-shirts is simply 12 lots of 7.99, no problem there. As you increase the number of t-shirts, you, you are increasing the cost at a rate of £7.99 per t-shirt, dead easy. In this next example, we know that Billy uses 250 millilitres of rum for five cocktails. So we need to work out 14 cocktails, but since five doesn't go into 14 very well, let's work out how much he uses for one cocktail. So 250 divided by five is 50. So 250 is for five cocktails, therefore 50 for one. So therefore, if he uses 50 per cocktail, then for 14 cocktails, it's gonna be 50 multiplied by 14 and 50 multiplied by 14 is 700 so he's going to use 700 milliliters of rum so all direct proportion is is as you increase one amount then the other amount increases as well increase the number of cocktails you're increasing the the amount of rum you're adding if you're increasing the number of t-shirts you're buying then you're obviously increasing the price so as one goes up the other goes up but with inverse proportion otherwise known as indirect proportion, as one value goes up, the other value goes down. Um, it's normally quite logical in a question. So it takes four people six hours to paint a wall. So how long would it take 12 people to paint the same wall? So four people equals six hours. So 12 people. Now, a lot of people don't even think about the context of the question and feel like, okay, four times three is 12. So six times three is 18. So it's gonna take 18 hours. 
But that is a complete nonsense. If you've got more people painting the wall, it's gonna take less time. More people doing the job equals less time doing the work. So if it takes four people six hours and we've got 12 people, that's if we've got three times more people, then as we have to assume they're all working at the same rate, then it's gonna take three times less time and six divided by three is two. So the answer here would be two hours. In this next example, we know that five clerks takes 32 minutes. How long would it take to complete the checking process if an additional three were employed? So that would be, we need to work out how long it would take eight clerks. Now we can't go from five to eight very easily. We could have gone from five to 10 or five to 15 or five to 20, but five to eight is nasty. So what we have to do is work out how long it takes one clerk. So that is five times fewer people, but it's not five times less time. If there are five times fewer people doing the job, the job is gonna take five times longer. So here the one clerk is gonna take a lot longer than five clerks. Assuming they all work at the same rate, then one person will take five times as long. So one person will take 160 minutes. So if one person takes 160, how long will it take eight? So we've got eight times more people, but it will take eight times less time. So we need to divide 160 by eight. So it's gonna take the eight clerks 20 minutes. So be careful with inverse proportion. Just remember that, just think about the question. What? Think of it logically. More people doing a job equals the job being done in less time.